China's economy takes a hit after the party congress. Chinese spies face charges in the U.S. And Hong Kong is doing just great. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Every year, the Chinese Communist Party sets a growth target for the Chinese economy. This year, they set that GDP growth target at 5.5%. But because of their zero COVID policy, China's economy has been way underperforming. Even according to official statistics, which, shall we say, are sometimes slightly massaged. According to GDP numbers released this week, China's economy showed higher than expected growth this quarter of 3.9%. Yes, that is below 5.5%, but no one actually expected it to be that high. Analysts polled by Reuters were forecasting 3.4% growth. So the economy technically exceeded expectations. Hey, that's what my third grade teacher, Miss Murphy, said about me. I'm realizing that's not a good thing. Anyway, the big reason this looks better than expected is that China's economy actually shrank by 2.7% last quarter compared to the beginning of the year. So China really needs a big rebound to make the party's growth target of 5.5% by the end of the year. Now, I'm no economist, but I think I can predict what's going to happen next quarter. China's economy is going to bounce back. It's going to grow just quickly enough to either meet or slide right under the Communist Party's growth target. Let's say 5.4%. Everyone will write headlines about how China's economy technically exceeded expectations. While China's GDP grew, that's about the end of the good financial news this week. Chinese stocks fell around the world as investors suddenly realized that China is ruled by a Communist Party. The top 10 Chinese companies listed on U.S. stock exchanges lost almost $70 billion in market value on Monday. In Hong Kong, the Hong Sung Index had its largest one-day drop since the 2009 financial crisis. So why were investors freaking out? One reason could be because Chinese leader Xi Jinping keeps talking about how great the zero COVID policy is. There's no indication that zero COVID is going to end anytime soon. And many economists see that as the primary thing wrecking the economy. And investors are also concerned that the Communist Party's ideology-driven policies would be prioritized at the cost of private sector growth. So, foreign investors have been pumping billions into China for decades, a country ruled by a Communist Party that literally has Marxism, Leninism, and a whole bunch of other ideological theories written into its constitution. It's also a country where the party has a massive amount of control over both state-run and private companies. For example, this is ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok. And these investors just realized that the party might be driven by ideology? Good for them. China's Premier Li Keqiang, who currently oversees economic policy, will be stepping down next March. Li Keqiang's likely replacement, Li Qiang, is a die-hard Xi Jinping loyalist. Li is also the top party official who oversaw the crushing two-month lockdown of Shanghai earlier this year. At the time, many people thought that would be the end of his career. But loyalty to Xi Jinping was apparently more important. By the way, a little general hostility side note here. If Li Qiang does become the premier, that's a sign that Xi is going to make some big changes to how the party handles the economy. So, stop investing in China. And after the break, the FBI charges Chinese spies. Welcome back. Could Elon Musk's honeymoon with China be ending? Tesla is cutting the price of its cars in China, a possible sign of slowing demand. Tesla didn't give a reason for the price cuts, but analysts say it's because of competition from Chinese electric car makers and a sluggish economy. Tesla raised prices earlier this year to deal with increasing materials costs. Despite that, the China Passenger Car Association said Tesla had record sales in China last month. If Chinese demand for Teslas does dry up, though, this could be really bad news for Tesla. 
Investment bank Morgan Stanley estimates that up to half of Tesla's profits come from the Chinese market, which is why Elon Musk could be sucking up to Beijing. He was praised by China for suggesting that Taiwan, a fully independent country, could keep some, maybe most of its democracy if it became a part of China. The U.S. Justice Department unveiled charges on Monday against two Chinese spies working on behalf of a Chinese telecommunications company. That company is likely Huawei. The spies were accused of trying to steal information on a criminal investigation into Huawei in the Eastern District of New York. They did that by allegedly paying a $41,000 Bitcoin bribe to a U.S. government employee who the defendants believed had been recruited to work for the PRC. The defendants believed that they had recruited the U.S. employee as an asset. But in fact, the individual they recruited was actually a double agent working on behalf of the FBI. Ooh, double agent. Very spy versus spy. The double agent provided the defendants with documents that appeared to present some of the information they sought. In fact, the documents were prepared by the U.S. government for the purpose of this investigation and did not reveal actual meetings, communications, or strategies. The U.S. government says the two spies are still at large, but overall this is good news. I'm glad to see the U.S. government is actually shedding light on these things. And also on Monday, the Justice Department charged seven Chinese nationals it says were part of China's Operation Fox Hunt. Operation Fox Hunt is how the Chinese Communist Party tracks down fugitives all over the world. Sometimes these fugitives are former officials. Other times, they're dissidents who have spoken out against the Communist Party. The goal of Operation Fox Hunt is to get them to return to China to face punishment. In this case, the seven are accused of trying to force one Chinese national living in the U.S. to go back to China. The indictment alleges that the defendants, working at the direction of the government of the PRC, engaged in a campaign of harassment, threats, surveillance, and intimidation aimed at coercing the victim to return to China. Two of the seven Chinese nationals have been arrested. And finally, the Justice Department also charged four Chinese nationals, three of whom were working for China's Ministry of State Security, with trying to recruit Americans to act as agents of China. The four targeted university professors and a former federal law enforcement official, among others. One of the things they asked the former law enforcement official was to help stop protests along the 2008 Olympics torch route in the U.S. because it would be embarrassing to China. So when you think of the Chinese Communist Party, remember that they're so scared and petty, they'll use spies to stop people from holding up a free Tibet sign in another country. And after the break, China's other extra-legal law enforcement network is getting exposed. Welcome back. Last month, we reported that underground Chinese police stations were popping up all over the world. Well, the Netherlands says it's now investigating two such police stations, one in Amsterdam and another in Rotterdam. A Dutch broadcaster said that the offices were supposedly set up to help Chinese nationals with administrative things, like renewing a driver's license in China. But apparently that wasn't their only mission. The offices had also been used to track and harass critics of Beijing. The Dutch foreign ministry said they were never notified that China was sending law enforcement into the country. It called the Chinese police offices illegal. China's foreign ministry claimed they were just overseas Chinese service centers, not police stations at all. Yeah, they're not police stations. If you don't call them police stations, a rose by any other name doesn't smell as sweet. Sorry, Shakespeare. And finally, in our periodic Hong Kong's doing just great segment, Hong Kong activist Jimmy Lai, who owned the pro-democracy Apple Daily newspaper, has been convicted of fraud. The U.S. State Department has called those fraud charges spurious. Many are worried that Hong Kong courts are being politicized by the Chinese regime. So far, almost 3,000 people have been prosecuted for protesting against the Hong Kong government in 2019. And in an ongoing national security trial, one Hong Kong activist has been told she can't say the words Tiananmen Massacre in court. The prosecutor suggested she use the term June 4th incident instead. Like I said, Hong Kong is doing just great. And this episode of China Uncensored was sponsored by you. 
We're able to keep making episodes like this because of fans who support us on the crowdfunding website Patreon. And as a thank you, I answer your questions at the end of each episode. Today's question comes from Ken Filbert. Chris, how can I watch full episodes off YouTube? I will continue to donate to you. Your content is pleasant to watch, even the most distressing issues, you can make us smile. Thank you, sir. No, Ken, thank you, sir, for helping us keep the show going. So I've heard from some of you on Patreon that you can't watch episodes that YouTube has age-restricted. That's because we're embedding those videos from YouTube. We're looking for a fix for that. But we do also upload to Odyssey and Rumble. And we also have our own website, ChinaUncensored.tv, where you can also check out our cool merch. So Ken, thanks for supporting the show. If you'd like to be just as cool as Ken, visit patreon.com slash ChinaUncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.